Yellowstone is one of the country's most visited national parks, but social media rumors about the Yellowstone volcano on the verge of eruption are causing a lot of confusion online. Yellowstone National Park has long represented more than just a slice of American wilderness. It's a geothermal marvel, a tourist hotspot, and unbeknownst to many, a ticking geological time bomb. But something's changed. The gates were sealed without warning by park personnel. There is no advance notification. There is no specific explanation. With only a vague explanation concerning infrastructure concerns, armed guards hustled tourists out within hours. Flights were redirected, airspace is constrained, and underneath the polite veneer of government remarks, a much more worrisome reality was forming. Enter Dr. Michio Kaku, a theoretical physicist famed for reducing difficult science to simple, terrifying realities. When he just broke his silence on Yellowstone's abrupt shutdown, he did not avoid the matter. His statements were terrifying. According to Kaku, seismic patterns, magma flow, and satellite data indicate that the Yellowstone caldera, a supervolcano, may be waking up in a way that geologists have long dreaded. To the untrained eye, Yellowstone still appears the same. Enormous woods, gushing geysers, and peaceful lakes. But underneath that postcard, Beauty is a lava chamber the size of several towns, which hasn't erupted in over 640,000 years. And now, indicators point to movement, deep, rumbling, and potentially disastrous. This is not science fiction. It's occurring now. Yellowstone, the sleeping behemoth under America's heartland, has awakened. And as scientists hunt for answers, the rest of us are left to wonder if we are seeing the opening act of a calamity that might alter the planet. It did not begin with an explosion. It began with whispers of unusual behavior by wildlife, weird odors, and an uneasy sensation on the earth. In the weeks preceding the park's shutdown, small yet unsettling signals began to emerge. Herds of bison were recorded on camera escaping the park in droves, dashing down roadways in organized stampedes. Elk, too, were moving in unusual, intentional patterns. Rangers reported geysers erupting at unusual intervals with steam vents spewing longer, louder, and hotter than usual. Visitors also noticed it. Tourists began complaining of extremely warm earth, as if the earth were ill. Some even felt mild tremors under their feet, which were disregarded at the time as trivial, isolated incidents. But behind the scenes, park biologists were getting concerned. Then came the tremors, which began mild, became stronger, and became persistent. In only a few weeks, the park saw almost 2,000 earthquakes, the majority of which occurred in the Norris Geyser Basin, one of Yellowstone's most explosive areas. While earthquake swarms aren't uncommon, the pattern here was unique, more intense, more frequent, and more ubiquitous. However, when the closure occurred, it was not characterized as a geologic emergency. It was veiled in bureaucratic jargon, maintenance, safety protocols, However, the truth was written in the sky. Satellite footage began to reveal symptoms of ground deformation, with areas of the caldera gradually elevating by inches, stretching the terrain like a drumhead tightening from underneath. A strong sulfur cloud began to settle in low valleys. Even pilots flying above the area noted unusual heat distortions emanating from the ground. Anyone who paid careful attention could see that the Earth was more than merely active. It was warning us. Dr. Michio Kaku is one of the most authoritative voices in science. Kaku, known for bridging the gap between cutting-edge research and the general population, has never been an alarmist. His new insights about Yellowstone, however, were not just sobering, but also horrifying. According to Kaku, Yellowstone is experiencing more than simply seasonal tectonic straining. It is displaying the clear signs of pre-eruptive behavior. Satellite thermal imaging demonstrates that heat signatures are growing in unpredictable patterns well beyond the traditional geothermal zones. Ground-based GPS sensors show rise in many caldera regions, indicating that pressure is increasing within the magma chamber. Not subtly, not slowly, significantly. The most worrying development, according to Kaku, is the observation of deep harmonic tremors, a seismic pattern commonly referred to as the Earth's equivalent of a volcanic heartbeat. These low-frequency quakes are rarely felt on the ground, although they are a recognized forerunner to magma migration. In Yellowstone's instance, these tremors are now happening with alarming consistency beneath critical fault lines. Even more concerning is the data blackout. 
The U.S. Geological Survey, which is generally forthcoming with real-time seismic data, has unexpectedly blocked public access to Yellowstone's earthquake swarm information. On the same day that Kaku's concerns were issued, the USGS discreetly modified its website to remove granular data. There is no news conference. There is no public alert system. Just quiet. Kaku's conclusion was clear. If this pattern continues unabated, Yellowstone's supervolcano might go from slumber to eruption in months, or even weeks. And if that happens, the consequences will extend beyond Wyoming and the western United States. It would have a global impact. Because Yellowstone is not just any volcano, it's the sort that alters history. To comprehend the magnitude of Yellowstone's peril, first understand what it is. Under the woods, rivers, and renowned geysers sits a magma chamber that is approximately 30 miles broad and many miles deep. This is not simply a volcano. It's a mega volcano, and if it explodes in full power, it will not cause a local tragedy. It will be a planetary event. Dr. Michio Kaku and other geophysicists believe that a Category 8 eruption from Yellowstone would spew over 200 cubic miles of volcanic material. That is thousands of times stronger than Mount St. Helens. The ash cloud alone would cover North America in days, obscuring the skies, destroying farming systems, and polluting water sources. However, the most terrible outcome would be the advent of a volcanic winter. Launching ash and sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere would obscure sunlight for months, if not years. Temperatures would plummet globally. Agricultural yields would fall. Global supply chains would collapse. Cities that rely on vulnerable infrastructure, such as power, clean water, or food imports, will be the first to fall. The Midwest, also known as the breadbasket of the world, is firmly in the fallout zone. Grain silos, livestock ranches, and irrigation systems would all be rendered worthless under a layer of ash several feet deep. Respiratory disease would increase. Clean water would be rare. Tens of millions would be relocated within the first few weeks. Government agencies are oddly silent. FEMA has not given any comprehensive remarks. The Department of Homeland Security is tight-lipped. Nonetheless, military convoys have been spotted in many western states, silently assembling near key roads and airports. Hospitals in adjacent counties are receiving equipment for triage rather than normal care. Nobody is speaking the word eruption out loud, but they do not have to. The quiet tells plenty. If you want to tell when anything is wrong with the Earth, look at the animals, not only the seismographs. Nature has its own alarm system, and it is going off. Motion-triggered cameras installed along Yellowstone's perimeter have captured an astonishing sight. A mass animal movement, wolves, bears, elk, and bison, species that regularly contend over territory, are quitting their territories in waves and moving away from the park's heart. Some have migrated dozens of miles east into farmland and even residential areas, not in a panic, not in pandemonium. However, they move deliberately and purposefully, as if they anticipate something. At the same time, park rangers have seen dozens of unusual behaviors, like birds refusing to settle, insects disappearing from geothermal zones, and fish avoiding portions of rivers that used to be teeming with life. Pets in the villages surrounding Yellowstone are displaying indications of great fear, with some refusing to go outside. Farmers have reported seeing animal herds standing totally motionless, looking at the horizon for hours. It's not only biology, it is geology. Electromagnetic measurements from the area have started to vary dramatically. Spikes in sulfur dioxide and radon gas indicate that magma is not only rising, but also interacting with groundwater and other underground elements in unexpected ways. These chemical interactions can result in phreatic explosions, which are steam-powered blasts that can erupt unexpectedly and destroy anything within a few miles. But possibly most alarming are infrasonic waves, which are too low for the human ear to perceive, but can be detected by specialist devices. Scientists refer to these waves as the drumbeats of a restless Earth. Yellowstone's rhythm is becoming louder. Animals are listening. The Earth is groaning. Something old is awakening. Despite the warnings, research, and strange messages from nature, one grim fact remains. Yellowstone cannot be stopped. There is no technology to relieve the pressure developing beneath the Earth's crust. There is no mechanism that can cool a magma chamber as large as Los Angeles. If it explodes, it will do so under its own terms. Nonetheless, behind closed doors, 
preparations have begun. Thermal satellite scans currently reveal a large heat plume reaching north and east of the park's limits, indicating that magma is branching into new territory or splitting through ancient rock strata. According to geodetic data, the ground is warping in irregular patterns rather than simply expanding. This signifies that pressure is not being distributed safely. It is being trapped. Gravimetric sensors have discovered tiny dips in local gravity, indicating that heavier rock is being replaced by lighter rising magma. This material, which was previously reserved for scholarly papers, is now being secretly shared around worldwide scientific networks, some of which have begun cooperating in real time, evading government firewalls. That's how serious it is. Even AI-powered forecasting models based on past eruptions are failing. Yellowstone is not acting like previous volcanic systems. The formulae do not fit. And as the arithmetic goes down, so does our sense of control. Meanwhile, emergency exercises are being conducted in surrounding counties. Mobile clinics are springing up. Supply caches are being shifted. FEMA stations are surreptitiously supplied with water, fuel, and breathing masks. Perhaps most unnerving, the airspace above Yellowstone remains blocked with stories of military surveillance drones conducting round-the-clock inspections. Dr. Michio Kaku stated it best, this is no longer theoretical. Yellowstone is dynamic, changing, and accelerating. And if it hits its breaking point, we won't have months to plan. We will have hours. Yellowstone is no longer simply a park. It is no longer merely a scientific curiosity or the setting for family holidays. It is now one of the most hazardous and least understood forces on the planet silently pulsating beneath the surface and transmitting warnings that the world cannot afford to ignore. Dr. Michio Kaku didn't ring the alarm for dramatic effect. He was doing what science requires when silence becomes dangerous. He revealed the truth. The caldera exhibits pre-eruptive tendencies. The earth is rising, gases are increasing, wildlife is escaping, and the earth is physically shifting from under our feet. Every oddity, inexplicable closure, an unnerving tremor adds another line to a narrative that no one wants to watch unfold. If Yellowstone erupts, it will devastate more than just towns and forests. It will alter society. Crops will fail. Water supplies will be endangered. The skies will darken for months. The ripple effects will be felt all around the world, economically, ecologically, and socially. The most troubling aspect, however, is that we have no idea whether it will happen tomorrow or a hundred years from now. This is what makes Yellowstone so scary. Not only is it powerful, but also timeless. The Earth is not on our schedule. It's never been. All we can do now is watch, monitor, prepare, hope. But deep down, we know that the clock underneath Yellowstone is ticking. And when it chimes, it does not whisper. It will roar.